Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Yakuza Like a Dragon. I'm the Serious JG, and as a matter of fact, I'm actually re-recording a video. I just recorded, and the sound sync was kind of terrible. It's It's been a, kind of a weird thing. Like, this, this thing works so great when it's working, and every so often it just blows up sound sync on something. And the way I've got it set now, like, I don't have to do any processing. Everything just comes out. It's super convenient, except every so often it doesn't come out right. So, like, I'm still on the fence about, like, oh, well, should I record the sound, the audio differently so I can, I can resync them, but I don't want to do that. It just works so perfectly when it works. Anyway, uh, so I know I have a little bit of foresight about what's going to happen to this video because I'm basically redoing it, but, um, I had been talking last time about how, uh, we're going to go back to the main story. Um... There's nothing to be done in Dragon Cart except grinding races we already can do. I can't get any new Dragon Cart content until later in the story. Um, so, it's not going to be a ton of Dragon Cart. We could do the Batting Cages and the um, Heaven's Golf. And uh, Arcades are a thing. But really, uh, I just want to get going with the main story. There's a. Uh, there's not a lot of side quests that we can do right now, uh, at least like official side quests. We can do side activities, but not side story events. Excuse me. So let's get going. Let's get let's get going back on the main story. And um, because I just did this video um, and then lost it, there was a party conversation that generated. So I'm going to try to take the same path I took uh, to get that party conversation again, hopefully. Uh, and then it was just a series of cinematics. Um, we didn't do any combat. Uh, if, if this goes exactly the way the last one did, we won't have any combat. It's all story cinematics. As we come down here, uh, Roddy Rako, his mom, <laughs> and I spent a few minutes talking about that in the last video. I won't repeat. Um, other than to say, yeah, right, like I, I uh, maybe I will briefly. In the video that's been lost a time, I did go off on a small tangent about, see, she's too old to be Roddy Rako. And then I was like, well, no, PS Rumble Rose is a PS2 game. So, Reiko, who was probably supposed to be... Well, knowing Japan, she's probably supposed to be a teenager. The fact that she was a pro wrestler means she should have been probably in her late teens, early 20s if she was, like, a hot female pro wrestler. But, um... It was a PS2 game, so she would be older now, but she shouldn't be old enough to be the lady uh, who has the Japan jacket and had been kind of yeah, a recurring plot character. So I, I was thinking, well, it could be, you know, unless she lived really rough. And uh, Roddy Reiko does seem like somebody, because Reiko is like the little cute, sprightly baby face, and she turns into Roddy Reiko, who is like a darker, ed or, you know, more of an edge. Uh, and she's hanging out with the Red Warriors. That, like, she might, okay, maybe, she, maybe it's darker than we thought, and she really gets into, like, heavy drinking or something, um, but she shouldn't really be old enough to be her. So, then it, that has been why I've been calling her Rowdy Rako's mom, but Rowdy Rako's mom actually is the plot character in Rumble Roses, and she's dead, and I believe she was murdered by uh, Nurse Anesthesia, <laughs> who is a character in the game, too. So that gets weird. Anyway, let's, um... What I ultimately did is just made my way to this taxi. I think I made my way to this taxi, actually, because this was the alleyway that triggered a, uh, a party conversation, which I would like to... I thought I was going to make it. Didn't hit any of my companions. We gotta fight some more, she says, ignoring the fact that it's got hit by a car. Here we go. You stop by an arcade? Could use a breather. Games, huh? I don't exactly bring back the best memories. Mm -hmm. My family was pretty strict on rules. I was only allowed to play an hour a day. Oh my god, that's oh, tragic. Even a minute, and my console would get cut in half or some shit like that. Sounds like a Liu Meng household, all right. <laughs> they Oops. barely let me play, but it's not like that was enough to make me give out. So I just sneak it and do my best not to get caught. Then Yo. one night, my VMU quit on me like beep, man. You had a yeah, dreamcast, yeah. huh? That was the hardest thing I'd ever had to go through at that point. I learned a lot that day. Sorry, what were we talking about? Uh, nothing. Uh, why don't we just keep going? And to that end, we will keep going rather than playing arcade games. But 
I did notice there's more arcade games than I thought. A new Virtua Fighter was a thing, but you can play Fantasy Zone, apparently. And Outrun. Playing Virtua Fighter, uh... Because Virtua Fighter, I think, 5? I have now on my PS4. It was, uh... You know, free with PlayStation Plus. Um... Or maybe it's Virtua Fighter 2, but I think it was Virtua Fighter 5. But yeah, you, you get Virtua Fighter 2, like... We get some part-time hero points for playing that. I don't think Fantasy Zone or Outrun will do anything for us, but they're there, and I might at some point do something with them. Let's try to avoid this. And I ended up actually just kind of running past the cab we were going to get. So let's just... whatever. What's the... Whatever the fastest route is to get to uh, Zone there. What the hell is that? Oh, there's a, an item. Let's go achieve. Let's go retrieve the next item. And I guess we will get into combat here, even though I managed to avoid it entirely in the last video. This time we will have a little bit of combat. Cool. Black Blade Slasher. You're be in a Slasher might be a new character, but yeah, it's a crazy ass sword we've got here. I don't know what's up with these swords with, like, different... I guess because, uh... That's the sword that the plot of Ninja Gaiden, uh, the modern 3D Ninja Gaiden, is about. And then, um... Or Ninja Gaiden Sigma. But uh, also, uh, in my last Neo PlayStation, uh, play session, Neo 2 rather, I got that sword that looks like that. And that looks like the sword that, uh... Kenshin Uesugi carries around in some of the Samurai Warriors games. So even though it looks ridiculous and like it wouldn't actually work as a sword, I guess there's some famous historical, possibly ornamental, not for use as an actual combat sword sword that looks like that. Finish him off, Guan Yu. She's Glam Yu, the glamorous Guan Yu. Although that would be offensive to Guan Yu. He might think he's pretty glamorous already. Did somebody level up? I thought I heard the level up sound. I was like, we should be on Oh, we got a rank up for, uh... Uh... Monster of Rock... Jungi. I guess the Kappa quest is still... Like, I could just... At any point decide to spend an entire video with a guide and... Either get all the Kappas or... Find all the cats. I thought she something. I thought she something. Yeah, that that person is talking like they are a plot character and not just a regular old. I'll talk to this guy. We'll cut our taxes in half. Don't want to get stuck in the combat. Okay. These guys pass. This too should be. I'm gonna go talk to Rowdy Rayco. I certainly hope the sink is fixed because I I messed around with and like eliminated the settings for delay, um, like a hundred millisecond delay to game sound in my earphones, but uh, headphones, whatever you want to call them. But yeah, it seemed like I I'd, I'd already had them at zero, and it's still sometimes I don't know. It doesn't seem like I have consistency with when it will and will not work. All right. Let's get back to it here. Took a second to check something, and now we're back. Yeah, I just had a person fade to the far plane. That happened last time, too. Although we had a better view of them before they disappeared last time. Well, look with the cat track. By the way, this game is set in Japan. All this. You can tell by her jacket. Didn't I tell you? I'm decluttering. But only with you for money. I lugged all this out here by myself. Oh, I'm beat. Rex beat the British star. big, strong men might do the rest. You buying new futons or something? Psycho, you don't have this to help. Be good. Big strong man. And I called it ahead of time, but now I know for sure. There's no one here. Where are the girls? Okay, it's not just that she's decluttering, she's closing down. I was like, is she closing down? She's taking out a lot of stuff, and that turned out to be right. Yay me. But uh, also, like, where's all the girls? We've never met any of the girls. These girls are just, like, theoretical prostitutes. We've never met any of the girls who work for her. So I don't know why we're surprised now that they're not around when they've never been around in any other story scene. I'm closing up shop. 
and uh, I'll try not to go as long as I did last time, but I had this whole thing where it's weird to me that Psycho seems surprised and maybe it's just pure shock. It seems to me like she's also kind of sad and surprised that this place is closing down. And it's like, although Psycho's sister, uh, what was her name, Nanaha, uh, was in a position where she had to work at a soap land and Psycho, Psycho wasn't like, all that judgmental about it and she apparently works as like a bar hostess which is i guess there's like a sexual sexuality element to that job too but uh it is weird for a woman who is not working as a prostitute to be shocked and dismayed that you know uh a brothel would be closing down that for some reason that struck me as odd uh. Eugene Show Revitalization Shelter. What? It's a facility in Hamakita Park. Bleach Japan set it up. It's, it's clearly the evil. Industry, and their families can live there free of charge. For free? Damn. And all your girls went there? Well, yeah, free housing. They did. Why wouldn't they? The facility's offering job training and legal help with visas. No better place for girls like them who don't have citizenship. And Bleach Japan is behind this whole operation? Yeah, they're being useful for once. They're going to open more just like it, too. All right. I'm trying not to, like, be obsessive about recreating the video that was lost, but I paused here and went into a, a bit of a thing. Yeah, she doesn't seem that upset about this. Our party is going to react to this like it's terrible, but honestly, it's like they had established previously uh, a lot of the girls who are working as prostitutes are because they're illegal immigrants like from other asian countries where i guess their situations are bad they'd rather live kind of on the underside of japan than live wherever they came from so you know girls who can't get visas would work as prostitutes or whatever like rowdy reiko's mom seems kind of okay with this and we're the ones who are all upset but at the same time it's like yeah i know they're the, they're the villains but it's like in, in bleach japan's whole thing before one of the reasons we hated bleach japan was that they were like trying to just stamp out the livelihoods for these people who were kind of quote the gray zone people the people who are like you know the untouchable cast or something like that but like if they're now doing something to help those people it, the issue is and I, I i don't want to create the false impression that i spent a lot of time carousing with prostitutes and that i know a whole lot about that industry but you have to assume that a lot of people who are working in that industry don't have other options and some of the people who are working on the industry want to be in that industry. I'm not trying to, like, undermine the horrors of sex trafficking. I'm just saying some people are actually in that industry who, who want to be there. Um, whether, you know, you think that represents some kind of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like a mental disorder. Like, you know, what's the difference between being a nymphomaniac and being someone who actually just likes sex? Like, that's... That's a whole other area, but like, yeah, apparently all of her girls quit, which means basically all of them prefer that to what they were doing. So where's the problem? But we're going to proceed to act like this is terrible, which is kind of strange because um, unless it's like a freaking trap and once they have these girls information, they round them up and deport them, which we don't have any indication right now that's what's happening. Maybe that's what's going to be happening eventually. We're just like knee-jerk reacting, no, Bleach Japan, bad, when it appears that Bleach Japan is trying to help people. And they even offered to buy my place and turn it into a shelter. A but then what are you going to do? This place is your bread and butter, isn't it? Now I'm going to retire off the wealth I made as a prostitute manager. A job at the shelter. I'm going to be the dorm mother. Oh, well, it's good pay, and perfect for a feisty old gal like me. Gotta say, I'm coming around on these do-gooders. Come on. Because they're actually doing good. Don't you remember what they put you through? They were jerks. Sure, they were annoying. Bunch of kids tramping around, shouting shit they heard in prep school. But the actual villains I hate were the Korean mafia you are now in bed with who were siphoning off our power so that they could have monitoring over everything that was going on and be, like, fucking Mass Effect shadow brokers. So you've made friends with the people who are actually screwing me over. Bleach Japan were just kind of obnoxious. But hey, now they're putting their money where their mouth is. They got their it mind on the money and the blind. money on the mind. They actually did something about it. And apparently the shelters were Rio Aoki's idea. I have to say. You mean Rio, Rio Co Spaceship? I say the time. Here, but don't you think he's basically just buying boats? 
Once the election is over, I bet you he's gonna forget all about these shelters. As long as he doesn't literally yeah, demolish seriously. them. Politicians pull this shit all the time. And uh, again, kind of rigidly recreating my last video, I had to stop here because it's like, wait, do they? <laughs> I mean, something is happening. It's not like he's talking about doing this if he gets elected. It's happening now. And apparently people like it, so they reelect that person. Like, that's how democracy is supposed supposed to work if your elected officials do things you like you keep re-electing them i mean you've got all that like i mean you've got like you know i'm gonna build a wall mexico is gonna pay for it that, that i mean nonsense but like if somebody is in office and they start doing things you like you could be like oh he's just buying boats and bribing people yeah, i mean for sure that's how like the old political machines used to work in like chicago and stuff but still it's like unless they're tricking people into liking things that are bad for them, which in this case, it doesn't seem to be what's happening. That's how it's supposed to work. The other thing is, it's like politicians do that stuff all the time. I'm like, do they routinely clean up cities and then somehow jerk the rug out from under them in such a way that the cities go back to being not clean? Like Giuliani, I guess it was Giuliani, maybe it was somebody else, famously cleaned up some of the red light districts in New York City uh, as far as I know, those didn't come back. There are some people who wish they were still there, I suppose. But, like, they didn't really come back. <laughs> um, well, and Giuliani's obviously got a lot of other problems to deal with right now, but, um, hey, let's get back to the game. You don't know him. You can't just assume he's like that. You don't get to talk shit about Rio Oki, man. Any better option for my girls? Any spare rooms you'll let them live in? Will you pay uh, them no. to have sex with them? Oh, wait, that is how he used to work. Wait, he's in town? The Rio Oki monster? All right. See? That shows he's a good guy. The guy who's got a million things on his plate, but still carves out time for a friend. Well, he actually had that guy killed, so... You've got no business bad-mouthing him when you don't even know him. That's not the Japan way. The young master. Here, in the Ijin show. The innocent young you? master thought's moving yeah. ever faster. There's stuff I want to ask him about. Me too. Like... What kind of America surgery slash super drugs are allowing him to walk? Oh, what's your plan? Stroll up and demand a meeting with the most powerful man in Tokyo? Oh, funerals are the most powerful man in the world. Everyone's too polite to ask questions. Whoa, she just said that like she has a lot of experience sneaking into funerals that she doesn't belong in. Why are you supporting this lunacy? Support your local lunatic. Sorry, I'm a go -san. But do you mind if I get rid of your trash some other day? I can't have trash What's out on the street in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> There's just this thing I gotta take care of. Fine. Just don't leave me hanging, okay? I don't want my You're trash stolen of off of the street. I want it disposed of. So does anyone know where this funeral is? If it's any Jincho, it's gotta be at the morgue on Central. That's where Nonomiya's funeral was. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's roll on over there. Autobots, roll out. Let's uh, rumble right in. Should we put on our funeral garb? I guess we don't get to put on our funeral garb. I, I suppose we could. This is the party that has funeral garb that we could be wearing. So, uh... But I believe I would have to actually go... Legendary Heroes, Bat Plus... I believe I would have to actually go to... Hello, work to change in their funeral outfit. So let's just go. Now we did see this crowd over here, and this is why it was a plot thing. I remember the day we met like it was yesterday. Although yesterday was actually the day I had you murdered. Nice. Oh, well, see here, we had Zhao and uh, Jugi. Now they're going to disappear again from story, but. Hey, are you with Bleach Japan? Because if so, I'm going to beat you up. I hate those guys. Not good enough. The ceremony's just for family and Bleach Japan members. Because they were basically well, so. Let us light some incense. <laughs> they aren't even allowing journalists like me in. This monitor is all we get. But I can Today, light incense out here, right? I just want to light something on fire. That's what I'm saying. So here in Ijinja, the city of his heart and soul. And of his murder. I really hope this syncs up. If it doesn't, I don't know that I'm going to record this video a third time. You. 
more than anyone, yearn to see this city reborn. But I'm it was only six months ago that you came here with your family. Who am I also? And I remember how eager you were to change this town for the better. It became your passion in life. Your family were kind of but hated that you had no passion for them anymore, but still. Until they become one of its people. Which is why I was so moved when you chose to reside in Ijinchu. Moved there to have no you killed. There is no greater tragedy than the dreams we leave behind in death. And yours were bigger than most ever dared. You had big dreams, like Chivity Crockett. In our youth, as your peer who shared your ambitions. Your ambition to go to Neo-America and fire the Statue of Liberty cannon. Simply as a friend, you left too soon. I should have had you killed next week. Truly, truly a great boss. Having you murdered was very expensive for me. Hitmen are not so, cheap. What choice do we have but to face the future without you? We look to Kumeku, the protege to whom you entrusted so much. He has stepped I have not had murdered yet. Dream. And is there any greater oh, honor than jerk. in our passing? I, I keep thinking he's going to turn out to be a good guy. Like he's going to, because clearly he's a patsy. He doesn't understand the true nasty evil that is behind what's going on here. And I keep thinking at some point he'll like, maybe we're supposed to like this guy and he's going to kind of turn out to be good. But another part of it is like, nah, they might just make him be a weasley little asshole until the end. Someone else picks up the torch where we left it. The torch I used I to burn your body. We could help people find their way together. Which is to why, being murdered. In the coming election, I will throw the entirety of my support behind Kume. Unless I decide to have him killed. I say this not as the Citizens Liberal Party Chair, but for you, Club. Ogasawaraku, as your friend who would see your dream come true. I swear to do everything in my your power to bring your dream, big dreams. Jincho, to fruition. Your dream of a Jincho as being a place where you could live instead of being murdered. My old friend. Whom I had murdered. And smiled down on us from heaven. Or apologized to Ken in heaven. Man, he's using American super surgery and miracle drugs to cry at the, uh, you know, funeral of someone he had murdered. Ah, I'm also a jerk. You guys remember me from way back earlier in the story? I guess I showed up again more recently, but I'm a jerk. It'd be interesting to see at the end if he's loyal to the young master or the young master's dad, who is pretty clearly not truly on board with this nonsense. Like, at the end, we're going to find out the guy who shot us is the most noble hero of all who doesn't run a soap land. I'll try to keep it shorter, uh, but I hear I remember going off on a whole thing about... Remember how I used to sometimes pull clips from this old uh, Chinese television Romance of the Three Kingdoms show and put them on my channel, like um, the Three Oath Brothers thing, which was like the preview for the shoes, you know, me and Boba playing through the shoe missions of Dynasty Warriors 7 or 8, and um, Lu Bu riding red hair, and then probably my favorite, where I clipped together two, like the beginning and the end of one episode so that it was uh, Sun Tzu and Xiao Yu talking about meeting Tai Chi Tzu, and then and so you shall, a magical fairy made it so that they instantly got to meet Tai Chi Tzu. This, I, I'm now thinking about, I, I, there's a few times I tried to think of a way to put it on my channel or, or some joke and I never got around to doing it. Uh, Zhu Ge Liang's funeral in that show is like epic. It's got Liu Shan and various other characters like wailing and like banging their foreheads against the ground in grief, um, which is like a traditional ceremonial Chinese uh, expression of devotion to someone. And um, yeah, it's interesting culturally. I don't know if it's like that in modern China, but in ancient Chinese culture, they, it was like the opposite of the British stiff upper lip thing. Like it was. It was considered manly to cry at like a funeral and like the more you cried and the louder and like it got i think it would sometimes be theatrical and over the top but it was supposed to be like proper and confucian to show massive amounts of really like melodramatic grief and that's like now i'm like picturing all these guys in my mind like the 
I, I can't do it, but there's this awesome epic music playing in the background and this guy singing about Zhu Ge Liang in Chinese. And like I'm picturing all these people like on the ground, like banging their fists onto the onto the ground and wailing in sadness because this one dude who's kind of an asshole got murdered. We will continue your work for you. We will restore the Han. He really cares. He's in more No, he doesn't. He's a jerk. Here. And he still gave a speech. It's bullshit. Don't listen. Man, Don't believe Andor's lies. Eulogy. If Aoki really did order Ogasawara's death, well, then he's quite the actor. He should have really taken a career on the stage. Office. What the hell is his plan? Hey, I'm a jerk as he is. Here he comes, the fool. I have a stomach cramp. Oh. Let's move. Let's tackle him so we can get arrested. Party targeting this cycle. Any comment? Uh, we have a very specific number of seats we wish to win, and if we win more than that, we will relinquish them to the other political parties. What the fuck kind of question is that? Alkison, should we take your statement today as a campaign launch announcement? Yes. Any comment at all? Just a soundbite, Alkison. Little way. Please What's acknowledge me. We're holding a new election. Hey, don't push. I... I'm hoping that uh, I can um, unseat Pierre Trudeau. Don't push. <laughs> all right, folks, let him through. Let him through. Alki. Hey. Governor Alki. Time for karaoke. Can't even get close. Let's head him on. How? Don't do it. It's not like the governor took a train here. He's got to have a car nearby. Sure, but how? Of course. Check every parking spot in the neighborhood. You know, I once read in some tabloid that celebrities park underground to avoid the paparazzi. Well, that's clearly what's going to be happening here. The fact that you read about how that sometimes happens in some random tabloid means it obviously is what's going on. Alki probably uses the same strategy, don't you think? Yeah, that's a thought. Any underground lots around here? Yeah, there's a big one. It there's lots of underground it. lots. Great, let's check it out. Let's go start living in a band down by the river. For some random reason, I checked out that old SNL sketch uh, with Chris Farley. It had what, what Christina Applegate, who was like, I th she had cancer or something. Like, like she was like right on the cusp of becoming a big movie star, and um, it kind of didn't happen. And I think I read somewhere she was she uh, had like medical issues she was fighting, but it was like, um, it's Phil Hartman. And I don't remember the name of the actress who played the mom. She's funny, and I don't remember her name. But they were the parents, and then uh, I don't know why I'm going on about this. And then Christina Christina Applegate and um, David Spade paid played the kids, which is always weird in those sketches because David Spade is younger than Phil Hartman, but nowhere near young enough to be Phil Hartman's son, obviously. And then Chris Farley came in and he does the he does the um, living in a van down by the river. I don't care, man. Like, they, they rehashed that sketch several times. It got less funny each time, but you go back and watch it the very first time they did that sketch where David Spade is doing a terrible job of covering his laughing and Christina Applegate is doing a much better job, but is pretty clearly covering she's, that she's laughing. Like, she keeps putting her hand over her mouth and, like, kind of turning the long hair so it's uh, towards the camera and covering her face. Like, you, you, it's fucking funny. It is funny. I don't care. I don't care who we are. That's funny. It's not a huge Chris Farley guy, but damn, that was funny. And I saw it recently for some reason. I was, like, reminded, oh, yeah, that was really fucking funny. Uh, let's continue... Because this is about as far as I got before the last video ended. I've made it. I Just random nonsensical comments. Hey, that guy's all ready for COVID. Uh, oh, no, not an encounter. That'll... Ah, whatever. I'm trying to make it fast. Cool. Right Damn it. That's more like it. I don't know why that guy is a slasher, but I guess he's a slasher. And spastic, completely ineffective follow-up there. And he got cracked with the weird ass uh, darkness dragon of evil uh, 
Vagor Kingdom of Evil, Badness, and Ninja Gaiden, uh, sword. What the hell is even... Yeah, they really aren't very good with their counters sometimes. All right. Better luck next time. And you know what? I actually am not... Yeah, you know what? I Somehow I made it take longer this time. So we got the very next bit of story in the last video, but since it's been deleted, who cares? We're going to call it, and I'm going to really hope that this synced up better. And when we come back next time, we will be continuing the main story. See you.